Welcome to Designer Digital's Bi-Weekly Tip, July 12, 2019. This week, how to paint with watery photo masks in Photoshop and Elements. When you want to create a watercolor paint effect on your digital project, it doesn't get any easier than using Katie Pertit's watery photo masks. These brush sets are professionally designed to provide a simple way to give your digital project a wash of color but they can also be used to paint inside line art like the painted petals and leaves on Agnieszka's beautiful page. Here's how. Each watery photo mask download comes with an ABR brush file, which is a Photoshop brush file, in addition to the PNG image files of each of the masks. For this technique, begin by loading the ABR brush file version of the watery mask kit into Photoshop or Elements. Refer to our tip on loading and using Photoshop brushes if you need help with this step. It'll walk you through the entire process of loading the brush file into your software. Open a new document and align art image in Photoshop or Elements. The hand-drawn images and pencil line brushes at Designer Digitals are a great choice for this technique but really any outlined image or alphabet works well too. Using the Move tool, drag the line art image of your choice onto the new document. Now when I'm working with images like this that have a lot of transparency, I find it easier to just move directly from the Layers panel onto my new document. If you have a paper that you know that you're going to use on your digital project, you may want to go ahead and open up that paper as well so that later you can choose the color from that paper. Now I'm going to reduce the size of this original image and get it out of our way and then zoom in some on the flower so that we can work on these petals and leaves. Create a new layer by clicking the create a new layer icon in the layers panel. It's at the bottom of the layers panel here in Photoshop and at, in Elements it's at the top of the Layers panel. It'll look like a square with a little flipped up corner. If the top layer is selected, so in this case this is our flower image, hold the control key on a Mac system, that's a command key, as you click the create a new layer icon. This creates the new layer under the layer that you're working on, which is where we want it in this case. So in the Layers panel, you'll have the image at the top position with the new transparent layer in the middle and the background at the bottom. But you can drag the layers up or down the Layers panel to get them into position so that they're in this order. Next, click the foreground color chip at the bottom of the tool bin to bring up the color picker. You can select a color by choosing any of these colors that are in here or you can just drag your cursor over to that open paper and click to pick up that color and then click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size of this paper to get it out of our way so we're not so cluttered here on our screen. Before painting you'll need to make a selection to paint in. So select the top layer, that's the layer that has the line art image. If the portion of the image that you want to paint is fully closed, you can just get the magic wand tool by pressing W twice and then clicking inside the closed portion that you want to paint. So on this one, this petal is fully enclosed and when I click on it, it makes the little selection of marching ants right around the area that I want to paint. But if the part of the image has a gap, like look at the leaf down here, there's a gap. So if I were to click inside here, oh look, it doesn't make a nice selection. It selects the whole background too. So what you'll want to do in that case is get the magnetic lasso tool or the lasso tool. Now if you're good at hand drawing, you can just get the lasso tool and you can click around and draw out your selection like this. When you get back to the start, it closes the selection and makes some marching ants. I'm not that great at hand drawing, 
So the other method you could do is get the magnetic lasso tool. And on that one, you can just click and make little anchor points all the way along the portion that you want to enclose and make a selection. And when you get back to that first dot, look, it makes marching ants and it makes a nice selection for you. Next, choose the middle or blank layer and get the brush tool by pressing the letter B or choosing the brush over in the, in the tool bin. Choose a watery photo mask image that you loaded in the first step. In Photoshop, the brush picker is up at the top in the tool options, but in Photoshop Elements, your tool options will be at the bottom of the screen. Once you choose a mask, then you can reduce the size here as well by dragging the size slider. Making sure that the middle layer is selected, so that's the blank one, click inside your selected area to paint it. Remember that with the brush open, you can use the left bracket key to reduce the size of the brush if necessary, or you can use the right bracket key to increase the size of the brush. Press Control D or on a Mac system Command D on the keyboard to get rid of the marching ants or the selection. To paint another portion, select the top layer again, and then use the magic wand or the lasso or the magnetic lasso to make a selection. Let's just make it easy with the magic wand tool this time and click inside this petal. Get the brush tool, and then again you're going to want to create a new layer by pressing Control and the Create a New Layer icon. On a Mac system, that's Command and the New Layer icon. This is going to put another new layer underneath the brush image. And then using the brush, you can click inside that selection. And it won't paint anywhere except the little portion or the petal that you've selected. With each painted area on its own layer, it makes it a lot easier to make changes or correct mistakes without losing any of your other work. I'm going to press Control D on a Mac system, that's Command D, to remove the selection. And then using the Move tool, you can even drag over your paint a little bit to make it look a little less perfect, a little bit more handmade. You can even increase or decrease the size of it slightly to make it go just slightly outside the lines. Using this, your line art will look hand painted and it's such a simple technique. Thanks for watching this week's video and be sure to check back in two weeks for another Designer Digitals tip.